A Stuart Models Beam Engine Rebuild Part 21, making the new piston blank. The first thing to do is to assemble all the parts that you need. In this clip I'm measuring the length for the piston rod. Using my small bandsaw I'm cutting it to size. I'm cutting the length of the piston rod purposely too long. There'll be more about that in the next episode. But for now I'm going to concentrate on making the piston blank. I found a suitable piece of brass. Here it has been fitted into my new three jaw chuck. I found this piece of brass in my scrap box and it's a bit of a funny shape, it's tapered at the end, but that's not a problem. The first thing to do is to accurately check the size of the former piston. And as you can see, it's four thou below one inch in diameter. This is not a problem at all. The piston does not need to be a perfect fit in the cylinder if you're using a silicone o-ring. Starting the work and the first part of the job is to face the end. To be honest though, I don't really need to face the end of this piece of brass because I will be turning it round in the chuck, but it just bothers me that it has a depression where it's been drilled in the past. Whenever I put a piece of bar into the chuck, I always feel obliged to face the end. It's an old habit, and old habits die hard. Time now for the longitudinal cut. The speed of this clip is 400% above the normal speed, and in no time at all, thanks to the magic of video, I have a fully machined piece of brass bar. In the real world it's never a good idea in the home workshop to machine brass too fast because all the chips fly off in all directions. It's better to use a slower spindle speed and take a deeper cut. The parting off process I'm showing at normal speed and as you can see the chippings are flying everywhere. And almost magically and painfully most of these chippings are flying onto my hand which has been used to wind the handle which makes the parting tool move. Because on this old boxwood lathe, the only automatic traverse that I have is longitudinal. I'm still having trouble with the lathe speed, it's slowing up. It needs a new drive belt or two. For the moment though, I'm using this stuff, this is called belt slip. Also often referred to as belt dressing. You spray it onto the V-belts and it leaves a sticky deposit. It's a bit messy and I try not to use it, but at least now the tool is cutting properly because the speed of the lathe is constant. You will notice that I turned the piece of brass bar around in the chuck, it's held by the machine part. The end of the brass bar fell into the chip tray before the cutting tool had got all the way through. And here, before I face the front properly, I'm removing the small part that sticks out in the middle. The position of the lathe tool in the holder is vital. This particular cutting tool is not locked to centre height. Because there was a time when I used this cutting tool in both my Boxford lathe and the Smart and Brown lathe so I had to adjust the centre height for each of the machines. And in this clip I'm making an adjustment to the centre height. It was a little bit too high. If the centre height is too low, that's no good because it will leave a piece of metal sticking out of the centre of the work. And if the tool is above centre height, it will not cut the metal very well and when you get to the centre, the tool will be pushed away from the work and leave a raised part in the centre. That's it for the facing. Now the outside diameter turning. It is most important, in fact vital, not to turn the piston to the finished diameter at this stage. The final machining of the piston will take place once it's on the piston rod. And that's why I've split this section about making the piston. This one's only about making the piston blank. I've left the piston blank slightly oversized and now it's time to centre drill the middle bit. Followed by using a twist drill that is 5 seconds of an inch in diameter because this is tapping size for 2BA. It's a good idea to memorise the more frequent tapping sizes that you require. But failing that you can type tapping size for 2BA into Google. Now it's time to thread this hole in the piston blank 2BA. I'm using this 2BA spiral tap, I don't know where it came from, I think it just came in a box of bits. I don't like the squeaking noise that the brass is making, maybe the tap's a bit on the blunt side so I'm going to use some tapping compound to stop this. I'm tapping this hole by hand power as you can see, and suddenly it's taking far less effort to rotate the chuck once the tapping compound does its stuff. This tapping compound is an extreme pressure lubricant. It works very well under extreme pressure. In a similar way I suppose to the gear oil that you put in differentials on cars, that's normally called EP90 and the EP stands for extreme pressure. Or at least that's what I think the EP stands for. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know, but I'm sure some smart viewer will let me know if I am wrong. 
I can't help wondering what this stuff would be like for lubricating bearings, but I don't think I want to risk any bearings at the moment. Now the tap's at the bottom of the hole, it's time to withdraw it, and I did that under power. And now I have a nice clean thread in the centre of the brass bar. And to complete the piston blank, all I need to do is part it off from the main piece of brass. Using my micrometer, I measured the thickness of the original piston, and I've made this one a little bit thicker because there's still some more machining to do at it once it's mounted onto the piston rod. If you look carefully, you will notice that the chuck is still slowing down when I put a lot of pressure on the work. That is probably because the belt dressing has only just been applied and the solvent has not yet evaporated, time will tell. What I need for this boxwood lathe is a special segmented belt and I've found a supplier where I can get one and hopefully when I fit the new belt I'll make a video about doing so. Inside the small cupboard that houses the motor one goes from the electric motor to the first shaft then another one goes from the first shaft to the second shaft then finally there's a special segmented belt that goes up to the headstock. The piston blank has fallen into the chip tray so I'll look for that later. That's it for this episode, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.